In this video we'll look at moving off from a stationary position on flat uphill and downhill roads. The diagram shows your tachometer and speedometer, gear selection lever, handbrake and pedals. To the left is a schematic showing how the car responds to your input. It's not meant to be an accurate representation of the internals of a car. It shows a rear wheel drive car for simplicity, whereas most cars these days are front wheel drive. It makes no difference to this video. This is a manual car, as moving off in an automatic car is simpler. First, we'll start the engine. It's a good idea to check that the handbrake is applied firmly, as the vibration of starting the engine may cause the car to move if it's lightly applied, especially on a hill. If the handbrake is electronic and operated by a button, simply check that it is applied. For a manual handbrake, pull it up firmly to make sure. It's important to check that the neutral gear is selected, as starting a car in gear can result in unwanted and even dangerous movement. Give the gear lever a shake from left to right, because it won't move far in a gear, but in neutral the lever will move lots. It's not vital, but it is recommended to start the car with the clutch down. Even if it is in gear, starting with the clutch down will prevent movement. It's also slightly easier for an engine to start with the clutch down. When the clutch is down, the engine is disconnected from the transmission, so it cannot drive the wheels. So we turn the key or press the start button depending on the car. Watch the tachometer move from no revolutions per minute, or RPM, to what's called tick over. This varies slightly on different cars, but is usually somewhere under 1000 RPM. The engine is running slowly, but the car is standing still. The taco shows how quickly the engine is running. Petrol and diesel engines will stall, that is stop running, if made to run much less than tick over. We'll see how that can happen later. You can see on the taco that there's a broken red line between 6.5 and 7000 RPM, and a solid red line above 7000 RPM. Take a look at the taco on the car you're driving, if it has one, the red line starts at the point where the engine is running faster than it's designed to do, and the solid line puts the engine in danger of serious damage. Most cars now electronically limit the maximum RPM to prevent this damage. Petrol cars typically have a red line quite a bit higher than diesel cars. Pure electric cars have no clutch and a single forward gear, and the motor can stop without stalling. OK, handbrake checked, car in neutral, clutch down and engine started. If you're planning to move off straight away, leave the clutch down. Select first gear. If you're moving off down a steep hill, you could use second gear instead. Ask your instructor about the best position for your hand for each gear. Most cars prevent accidental selection of reverse, which may not be where it is shown here. And the lever, when in neutral, sits between third and fourth gears, with springs pushing it towards this central position. Watch the gear lever and the gearbox as we select first gear in the video. We're going to set the gas next. When you raise the clutch, you're going to put strain on the engine. To make a stall less likely, increase the engine's speed, and therefore its power, by pressing gently on the accelerator, moving it about the thickness of a pound coin. If you're planning to move off slowly on the flat or downhill, for example to manoeuvre at very slow speed, you'll need less power, so may be able to skip setting the gas and just use tick over. Diesel engines are less likely to stall than petrol engines, so setting the gas is more important in a petrol car. Using too much gas is likely to cause an unexpectedly fast start or even wheel spin. By the way, gas is short for gasoline, another word for petrol, and is a word more commonly used in the USA. It's easier to say than accelerator, petrol or diesel. We'll now look to find the bite. This is when the two parts of the clutch come together and are just touching. The bottom half of the clutch in the picture is not rotating, as it's connected via the gearbox to the wheels which are held firm by the handbrake. The clutch is described as slipping. This generates heat and very gradually wears down the friction surface on the clutch plates. Notice that the area described as the bite on the clutch pedal picture is quite small. The bite on the car you're driving could be higher or lower than shown in the diagram, but there should still be travel in the pedal below and above the bite. If you're very familiar with the car you're driving, you'll find the bite in a fraction of a second. Take your time until you're familiar with the car. Slowly raise the clutch pedal until you can feel the bite. The engine may slow a little, and the back of the car will go down as the engine and clutch pull the car forwards against the handbrake holding it back, like a dog straining on a leash. Come too far up with the clutch and you'll put too much strain on the engine as it competes with the handbrake. The engine will slow to below tick over, and then it'll stall. 
Press the clutch to the floor and restart the engine if this happens. You don't have to select neutral to do this. If you're on a flat road or downhill, you can find a low bite, meaning the clutch is only gently pressing together with very little strain on the engine. To move off uphill, or more quickly, find a higher bite where the car is straining against the handbrake and use a little more gas by pressing a little firmer on the accelerator. A word of caution, if you're using an electronic handbrake, some of these will release automatically when you have sufficient bite to move the car, so you'll have to delay finding the bite until you're fully ready to go. So when we're ready to go, all we need to do is release the handbrake and the car will start moving. So before releasing the handbrake, we must make sure it's safe to move. Make sure that no traffic will be affected by you moving. Remember that until now, to other road users, you may appear to be parked and unlikely to move. Look all around, make sure that vehicles behind you won't have to slow down as you gather speed, that no pedestrians are about to cross in front of you, and that driveways and junctions are clear of anyone likely to be affected by you. Also make sure that oncoming vehicles won't be affected by you if, for example, you're moving off from behind a parked car. Remember that pedal cycles may be alongside you, moving slowly. To move, all we have to do is release the handbrake. When you're first practicing, you could leave your feet still and wait for the car to catch up. The slower half of the clutch will gradually catch up with the faster part and your speed will level out. In reality, this results in moving off very slowly. Instead, we'll look at the best way. Release the handbrake by pulling up to release the tension whilst pressing the button. Then push it all the way down until it stops. Increase the gas a little and simultaneously and very slowly move the clutch beyond the top of the bite. Then release the clutch. You must move the clutch slowly at first or you'll risk a stall by overloading the engine. A moving stall can be very uncomfortable and careless drivers behind you, say at a junction, may run into the back of your car. There's no rush to get the clutch up when you're first practicing. Once the clutch is up, add gas until you're ready to change to second gear. When to change depends on a number of factors, but as an example, if you're climbing a steep hill, you may stay in first gear longer. Remember, you'll lose speed quickly when you press the clutch to a change to second gear when travelling uphill. In the video, we'll change up to second gear at just over halfway to the red line. Continue to change gears until you're in the correct gear for your chosen speed. You don't have to use all the gears on the way to your target gear. Have a look at the slip roads video for an example of when you may skip a gear. We'll leave this topic here, but one quick question. Why would you stall if you brake to a halt in gear without pressing the clutch?